Uh, hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to discuss the morphology of the deciduous maxillary central incisors. So each of the dental arch, this is a maxillary dental arch and this is a mandibular dental arch. So each arch has two deciduous central incisors. So today we are going to discuss maxillary deciduous central incisors. So there are two central incisors. This is the central incisor of the right side and this is a central incisor of the left side. These central incisors, in general, they resemble the permanent successors, with some exceptions, for example, arch size. In general, the arch size and size of the tooth is smaller. They perform the same function, cutting function, and they follow the same general shape. These teeth emerge into the oral cavity at the age of around 10 months, and the root completion is around the age of one and a half year. These teeth function about five years, mean these teeth are exfoliated or they are replaced by the permanent central incisors around the age of seven years. From the labial surface, if you look from the labial surface, this is the crown. So the crown, it appears wider mesiodistally as compared to incisor cervically. The mesial and distal outlines are more rounded. So this is a mesial outline. It is more rounded and the distal is also more rounded if you compare it with the permanent central incisor, maxillary permanent central incisor. This is an incisal surface. This is an incisal surface. The incisal surface, surface it slopes towards the distal side. Even in the newly erupted teeth, the incisal surface has no mammalons. This is the mesioincisal angle. The mesioincisal angle is sharp, while the distoincisal angle, this is the incisal surface and this is the distal surface. So the distoincisal angle, it is more rounded. The central incisor, it has a single root, which tapers towards the root apex. The, crown, the root, it appears longer from the cervical line to the apex as compared to the length of the crown. This is the palatal surface. On the palatal surface, the single, this is a cingulum, which is more prominent if you compare it with the permanent central incisors. These are the marginal ridges. This is the mesial side, so this is the mesial marginal ridge. And this marginal ridge is the distal marginal ridge. The marginal ridges are more prominent than the permanent teeth. This fossa is known as the palatal fossa, sometimes referred as the lingual fossa. The root, it is narrower on the, on the palatal side. So you can see part of the distal surface and the part of the mesial surface when you look at this tooth from the palatal surface. Now, this is the mesial aspect. This is the labial surface and this is the palatal surface. This is the cemento enamel junction. The cemento enamel junction or the cervical line, it curves towards the incisal aspect. The crown appears thicker at the middle third. You can see the crown is more thicker at the middle third. This is the mesial surface. On the models, you will see a developmental depression over here. Sometimes a developmental depression or sometimes a groove is present. On the distal surface, the curvature of the cervical line, this is the distal aspect. So the curvature of the cervical line, it is less. If you compare it with the curvature of the cervical line mesially. Distally, the crown and the root is generally convex and there is no developmental depression like that was present on the mesial side. From the incisal aspect, this is the mesial side. This is the distal aspect. This one is the labial and this one is the palatal aspect. So the crown, it appears wider mesiodistally as compared to the labiopalatal dimension. The incisal ridge, it is straight. The mesial and the distal surfaces, they are relatively, they are broad if you compare it with their uh, permanent central incisors.